Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Minui Maitri. Namo Tase Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa. Namo Tase Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa. Namo Tase Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa. Good evening, friends, and uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to you tonight about the Dharma. And uh, I hope that in some way, um, I keep it simple. Some of you know I spent 11 years in the Army, and uh, the biggest training key in the Army was keep it simple, stupid. And so any training you had to do, keep it simple, stupid. Uh, that's both referring to the instructor being stupid enough to... Uh, keep it stupid enough for the instructor to understand, but also keep it enough for the stupid soldiers to understand. So I hope tonight I can keep it simple. Uh, the Buddha often taught us in a way that was quite simple. Um, simple to comprehend, hard to accomplish. Um, but having said that, I want to start off with a, a passage from the Dhammapada. Uh, Verse 183 of the Dhammapada, the Buddha said this, cease from all evil, cultivate the good, cleanse your own mind. This is the teaching of all the Buddhas. Cease from all evil, cultivate the good, cleanse your own mind. How do we do that? I also want to share with you, um, a passage that from the Samyutta Nikaya that the Buddha shared, um, and I think it's a wonderful parable. It's the parable of the ancient city, and it goes like this. He says, suppose a man wandering through a forest would see an ancient path, an ancient road traveled upon by people in the past. He would follow it, and he would see an ancient city, an ancient capital, that had been inhabited by people in the past with parks, groves, ponds, and ramparts, a delightful place. Then the man would inform the king or a royal minister, sire, know that while wandering through the forest, I saw an ancient path, an ancient road traveled upon by people in the past. I followed it and saw an ancient city, an ancient capital that had been inhabited by people in the past with parks, Groves, ponds, and ramparts, a delightful place. Renovate that city, sire. Then the king or the royal minister would renovate the city, and sometime later, that city would become successful and prosperous, well populated, filled with people, attained to growth and expansion. So too, I saw the ancient path, the ancient road traveled by the perfectly enlightened ones of the past. And what is that ancient path, that ancient road? It is just this noble eightfold path. That is right view, right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration. I followed that path, and by doing so, I have directly known aging and death its origin and its cessation, and the way leading to its cessation. I have directly known birth, existence, clinging, craving, feeling, contact, the six sense bases, name and form, consciousness, volitional formations, their origin, their cessation, and the way leading to their cessation. Having directly known them, I have explained them to the bhikkhus, the bhikkhunis, the male lay followers and the female lay followers, this holy life has become successful and prosperous, extended, popular, widespread, well-proclaimed among devas and humans. 
these are the words of the Buddha that he was just discovering the same path that had been discovered before. It is a, uh, it's not, it's not by happenstance that in verse 183 of the Dhammapada, the Buddha summarized the whole Noble Eightfold Path as cease from all evil, cultivate the good, cleanse your own mind. There's another story in the Samyutta Nikaya uh, of Shariputra. And uh, we chant about Shariputra every week when we do the Heart Sutra. Um, and Shariputra was, um, he was in a, in a, I think it was in a forest that he was in. And um, along came, well, okay, so I, I got it in front of me here. I'll just read it to you real quickly. This one's very brief. On one occasion, Venerable Shariputra was dwelling at Magadha at Nalakagama. Then the wanderer, Jambu Kadaka, approached Venerable Shariputra and exchanged greetings with him. When they had concluded their greetings and cordial talk, he sat down to one side and said to the Venerable Shariputra, Friend Shariputra, it is said Nirvana, Nirvana. What now is Nirvana? Shariputra said, it's the destruction of greed, the destruction of hatred, the destruction of delusion. This friend is called Nirvana. But, but friend, is there a path? Is there a way for the realization of this Nirvana? There is a path, friend. There is a way for the realization of Nirvana. And what friend is that path? What is the way for the realization of Nirvana? It is, friend, this noble eightfold path. That is right view, right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. This is the path, friend. This is the way for the realization of Nirvana. How many people ask you, oh, you're a Buddhist. What's Nirvana? How many times do we say when we chant or recite those four great vows, four great vows every week, sentient beings are numberless, we vow to save them all, or we vow to help them all. What are we helping them do? We're helping them overcome their suffering. We're helping them find their own nirvana. How do we do that? We teach them the Noble Eightfold Path. That's the way. The Buddha said, here it is. I'm laying it out right for you. Follow this path. You will find nirvana. Now, it's not as simple as just saying right action, right speech, right livelihood, whatever. Because to each of these levels, there's both the mundane and the super mundane. There's both, there's both the earthly and the absolute, right? But as we learn them, as we follow them, we learn the things that the Buddha learned. Um, let's see if I can share my screen just a little bit. So here's my visual aids here. It's nothing that you don't know, haven't seen before. But I've grouped these as the Buddha does. In the Majjhima Nikaya in Sutta number 44, the Chula Vedala, Chula Vedala Sutta. Um, it's an interesting sutta, actually, because it's a story where there's a bhikkhuni who is teaching all the lessons to uh, Visaka, who is one of the great lay followers of the Buddha uh, and great patrons of the Buddha. And uh, so this bhikkhuni is teaching about, um, in this case, the Noble Eightfold Path. And the bhikkhuni breaks them down into three categories. The category of virtue, concentration, and wisdom. And we often hear these um, in their Sanskrit or their Pali terms, sila samadhi prajna or sila, sila samadhi panya, as they would say in, in Pali. Um, but these are the three categories of what the Noble Eightfold Path is. And in the 44th Sutta of the Majjhima Nikaya, um, Visaka asks if, asks this 
Bikuni, uh, this female nun, she, she asks her, she, she says, uh, uh, is the Noble Eightfold Path um, composed of three aggregates or compo composed of three um, groups? And to which the answer was no. These three groups are what the Noble Eightfold Path is composed of. And it seems a little different, but the reality was it goes back to the teaching of the Buddha in the 183rd uh, of, the, uh, of the Dhammapada, the 183rd verse of the Dhammapada, which was cease doing evil, right? Um, grab a hold of that which is good and free your mind. And so what, what they were teaching here in the Noble Eightfold Path is that each of these things rely upon the other. And uh, it's come up a few times. It came up recently when I was practicing um, with an uh, English Dharma group that follows the Thich Nhat Hanh uh, Plum Village tradition. And, um, you know, they focus a lot on mindfulness. And somebody had a question about, you know, where does mindfulness fit in? And, uh, and my comment to this other person was, you know, mindfulness is a very important part of the Noble Eightfold Path, but it is only one of the seven, and we can't forget the others. And the Buddha teaches very clearly that unless we have the virtues of right speech, right action, right livelihood, that we can't gain the wisdom necessary to be, to be that truly compassionate person, to understand the Four Noble Truths, to really understand and unlock our own minds so that we can do exactly what the Buddha was telling us to do in the Dhammapada. So when you hear the term Sila Samadhi Prajna, remember that's the way the, the Noble Eightfold Path is organized. And it's organized to lead us to greater wisdom. And as we gain that greater wisdom, we gain an understanding, the same understanding that the Buddha had, and we gain that nirvana. So what I wanted to leave with you tonight was, I, we're not going to go through each of these. We've heard them all a million times. But what I wanted to leave with you was really that, just that reiteration of what the Buddha tells us is the whole concept of learning to free ourselves from suffering. Cease from all evil, cultivate the good, cleanse your own mind. Thank you.